Frederick Douglass by Josh Gregory Spreading a Message In Massachusetts, Douglas began to build a new life with Anna. They soon started a family, eventually having five children. To support them, Douglas worked a variety of odd jobs. It was sometimes difficult to find work. Even though slavery was illegal in the North, black people living there were still not always treated fairly. Many white people would not hire them for jobs. Joining the Movement As a free man, Douglas was able to read whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. He began subscribing to abolitionist newspapers. In them, he read about the ways people were working to end slavery completely. He also started attending local abolitionist meetings, where people shared their ideas for ways to help. The Douglases arrive in New Bedford. At these meetings, Douglas became friends with important abolitionist leaders, such as William Lloyd Garrison. They wanted Douglas to share his story with others. At first, he was unsure. He did not want to draw too much attention to himself. But one day in 1841, he stood up and spoke to a crowd in the town of Nantucket. The audience was awed by his remarkable tale and his impressive way with words. Speaking out. Douglas was still afraid of being caught. However, he knew that his life story and speaking skills could help spread the abolitionist cause. He toured the northern states, giving speeches about his experiences as a slave. He became famous for his passionate arguments against slavery. Though he was sometimes met with harsh treatment from pro-slavery whites, he never gave up. Police and pro-slavery whites break up an abolitionist meeting as Douglas delivers a speech. Sharing His Story In 1845, Frederick published the first of his three autobiographies. The book became a bestseller. In it, Douglas included detailed descriptions of the violence and mistreatment he had experienced while a slave. The book was the first time many readers were exposed to the true horrors of slavery. Traveling Abroad Because he included the names of his former owners in his book, Douglas was more afraid than ever that they would find him. To avoid being captured, he traveled to Europe. There, he continued giving speeches and gathering support for the effort to end slavery. He made many friends and was amazed at how well people treated him overseas. Abolitionists in Europe did everything they could to support Douglas after hearing his story. Finally free. Though he was successful in Europe, Douglas knew he needed to return home. He wanted to be with his family and continue fighting to end slavery. To help, his European supporters raised the money he needed to pay his former owners for his freedom. This made him legally free. An escaped slave could be captured and returned to slavery. A free person could not. In 1847, he returned home, able to speak and write without fear. After returning home, Douglas went right back to work spreading his message about the evils of slavery. The Abolitionist Movement Frederick Douglass was only one of many people working to end slavery in the United States. From the earliest days of the nation, people spoke out against this horrible practice. Here are some of the most famous of them. William Lloyd Garrison An early supporter of Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison began publishing the anti-slavery newspaper The Liberator in 1831. Garrison was known for his controversial political opinions. While many abolitionists argued only for slaves' freedom, Garrison also argued for equality for African Americans. Harriet Tubman After escaping slavery when she was about 29 years old, Harriet Tubman dedicated herself to helping others do the same on the Underground Railroad. Slave owners offered rewards for her capture while abolitionists praised her heroic deeds. Sojourner Truth Like Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth was a former slave who became famous for her powerful anti-slavery speeches. Later in life, 
She dedicated herself to the cause of women's rights and provided advice to recently freed slaves. A National Leader After returning to the United States, Douglas decided to start his own abolitionist newspaper, called The North Star. Its first issue was published on December 3, 1847. Unlike other similar newspapers, it was owned, written, and edited by African Americans. It included everything from news articles to poems and book reviews. Douglas himself wrote many of the paper's articles. Freedom and Equality for All In addition to wanting to end slavery, Douglas believed in equality for all Americans. In the North Star, his other writings and his speeches, he often discussed the importance of equal rights for women. He also wrote often about the necessity of education for all Americans. The North Star was named for the bright star in the night sky that escaped slaves used as a guide toward freedom. A Spectacular Speech On July 5, 1852, Frederick Douglass delivered one of the best-known speeches of his career. He spoke at a Fourth of July celebration in Rochester, New York. In front of a crowd of about 500 people, he pointed out that Independence Day did not mark freedom for African Americans. It only stood for the freedom of the nation's white residents. He called for the country to embrace its founding principles of freedom and equality by ending slavery. The End of Slavery In the 1850s, the national debate over slavery became more and more heated. Many people in the northern states wanted abolition. However, plantation owners in the southern states did not want to give up their source of free labor. Finally, the Civil War broke out between the North and the South in 1861. Douglas hoped that the conflict could bring an end to slavery once and for all. A Timeline of Frederick Douglass's Life 1817 to 1818 Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey is born on a plantation in Maryland. 1838. Frederick escapes from slavery and takes the last name Douglas. 1845. Douglas publishes his first autobiography and travels to Europe. 1865. The 13th Amendment abolishes slavery in the United States. During the Civil War, Douglas encouraged free black men to join the military and fight against the South. He even met with President Abraham Lincoln to discuss the way black soldiers were treated. He wanted to make sure they received fair payment for their services. The North defeated the South in 1865. Later that year, Congress approved the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which officially ended slavery throughout the country. More to do. Even after slavery was abolished, Douglas kept fighting for equality. He argued for the importance of voting rights and other fair treatment for African Americans and women. Beginning in the early 1870s, he was appointed to several positions in the U.S. government. Among them were Marshal in the District of Columbia and U.S. Minister and Consul General to Haiti. These positions made him the first African American to hold high rank in the government. Douglas's meeting with Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War was just the start of his government leadership. Remembering a Hero In 1895, at about the age of 77, Frederick Douglass died of heart failure. Around the world, people celebrated the life of this great man. With strength and determination, he had risen up from slavery to become one of the nation's most influential figures. He is remembered as a hero who fought bravely to end slavery and promote equality. His work continues to inspire people to this day. Douglas greets supporters after taking office as Marshal of the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm.